The gospel this morning, I think, has two things that we need to concentrate on. The first is, who is Jesus? Who do you say that I am? And secondly, the church, where he says to Peter that you are, he says to Simon, and changing his name, says you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The name Petra in Latin means rock. And so Jesus was founding his church upon the faith of Peter and the apostles. First of all, who do you say that I am? Peter gave a perfect answer. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. We can give all kinds of statements about who is Jesus, the savior of the world, the one who died for us on the cross, we can see that he is the Son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, and on and on there are lots of theological and philosophical titles for Christ. But then he says to them, but who do you say that I am? Jesus is interested in every individual person, and so it's important to know what do you think of me? We can only look at what Jesus did and what he said in the Gospels and relate it to our own lives. Jesus, to me, is the Good Samaritan, the one who would stop and help the person on the road who was beaten and robbed to comfort and help them. Jesus is the one who, when they caught the woman in adultery, stopped them from stoning her and said, woman, where are they now? After he said, you who have, the, who have no sin, throw the first stone. Jesus is the one that looks into our hearts and sees where we are. He's the one that brings us healing and forgiveness, the one who brings us physical healing at times, the one who comforts us um, when we are afraid, who's with us when life seems to be so difficult or even impossible. Jesus said, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. This is the Jesus that I know and I think you know too. Lord, you're always there for me. You will always be there for me. And so we, we see that Jesus has an intimate love for each and every one of us. We do see him as the savior of the world. We do see him as the son of God. In his mighty power, he comes down to our lowliness in our humanness and, and is with us in all things. And then for the church, he's blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. He sees that the Father has given Peter faith, the gift of faith, and that he could embrace it and truly see Jesus as the Son of God. And you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. He was the first pope. Here is the line in scripture where we see Jesus giving Peter the authority to be the um, leader of all the apostles. Um, he is the one who will build his church. And you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 2,017 years later, the church still is thriving. The church is all, everywhere throughout the world. What Jesus started with 12 apostles has spread throughout the entire world. And so we can be grateful, and we can be grateful for our popes, can't we? Even non-Catholics recognize the holiness of the popes. Um, Thomas Edison, you know, one of the greatest inventors of all time from Ohio, um, he had a great admiration. He was not a religious man himself, but he had a great admiration for Pope Pius XI. And he discovered one day that the pope had so many correspondence, letters to write, responses to give to people, that it was almost impossible task. And so he invented a dictating machine, dictation machine, and he made it very beautiful. The exterior was lined in silver, gold, and ivory. And he sent it to Rome, to the Pope. And the Pope was so grateful for this new invention that he could speak into and have his thoughts put together and so he sent uh, Thomas Edison uh, a medal uh, with his inscription on it and so forth. 
And Thomas Edison was so grateful he carried that medal with him the rest of his life, over 64 years. He was also a man who gave regularly to the sisters, especially the, the um, little sisters of the poor. He made many monetary donations for them admiring their work. And I just share that with you because that's Christ, isn't it? Even if Thomas Edison wasn't a very religious man, as he said, he was acting as Jesus would, helping the little sisters, acknowledging the authority of the Pope, um, and being charitable in his life. And on and on, we can see many instances where the popes have been recognized. When Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul, um, at his funeral, there were the heads of almost every single religion in the world present, not just Catholics and not just Christians. People all over the world came to pay him respect because they recognized it's his holiness, um, his goodness, and the influence he had on the whole world. Um, and I was always impressed by that. And I've mentioned it at funerals that listening carefully to his funerals and the prayers that were, his funeral and the prayers that were being offered, it's the same funeral that I celebrate for a person who has only five people here. It's the same funeral mass that I offer for, for a whole full church the same one that was offered for the Pope. And I think that says a great deal about who Jesus is. He is here for each and every one of us in his liturgy and in the church. And it's good for us today just to give thanks um, for the gift of the church and the guidance from the Holy Spirit that we receive through the church and through the governance of wonderful popes that we've had in our history. And so today is a day to give thanks for that and the thanks that Jesus is here for me personally. And the only way that we get to know Jesus more is through prayer, through conversation with him in prayer. And so again, the, the scriptures always encourage us to pray always. It's what Jesus did. He always was going off to talk to his heavenly father about everything he did. And we need to do the same thing. So today we thank God for who Jesus is and for the church that he gave us.